Hi, I'm Tracy, the parish administrator for Amazing Grace Lutheran Church in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Welcome to the Sunday Sermon. Grace and peace be to you from our Lord God the Father in heaven and his Son Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm going to tell something that sounds wrong at first, but it's true. Every person wants to change the world. Without exception. Every person wants to change the world. Someone might be thinking, well, wait a second, I don't want to change the world. People who change the world are you know, large figures, you know, revolutionaries or big thinkers. Martin Luther, Mahatma Gandhi, those people are world changers. But me, I'm not a world changer. I will say that every person wants to change the world because every person sees the gap between the way things are and the way things should be. Everybody is aware of that gap. Everybody is aware of that gap between the way things are and the way things should be as a nation, as a state, as a county, on your streets, in your neighborhood, in your work, in your marriages, in your singleness, if you're single, in your homes, and even inside, there is this gap. And we don't like it. And we want to change that gap. And changing that gap is changing the world. It is innate as human beings, that we want to leave the world or our family in a better place because of us having gone through, right? It's something about our nature that we want to fix that gap. And in this way, I will say that every person wants to change the world. But um, we all know how challenging those gaps are. They're not easily closed. It may look like not that great a distance, but when you try to close the gap between the way things are and the way things should be, it is remarkably resistant to change. That's true in our own lives, and that's true for churches. Now, this fall, we've been talking about the kingdom of God. Jesus talked in parables and in teachings and trying to convey the truths of God to his followers. And so he says all these things, the kingdom of God is like. And always, Jesus says that the kingdom of God is like an activity. The kingdom of God isn't a place it's some divine activity. And we've looked at these different me um, metaphors of the kingdom of heaven is like a woman making bread. The kingdom of heaven is, uh, is like all these different things that God does, you know, a seed in the ground that grows. He says that the, in order to receive the kingdom, you have to be like a child. We talked about that. We talked about the great loving of the outcasts, that the kingdom of God uh, has a special place for outcasts in society. Jesus talked about all these things, and he brought all these things to earth in his ministry. 
And he pinpointed his ministry on that gap between the way things are and the way things should be. If there's illness, he brought healing. If there's death, he brought life. If there's not enough to eat, he brought abundance. And I'm interested in this community to think more about the faith in terms of the kingdom. That if Jesus was heaven on earth, that Jesus' followers, that is the church, is a little outpost of heaven on earth. And we usually don't think about church that way. We think about the church as something to do on Sunday morning. We think about a church, about, you know, a place we go with our friends. Some people think about the church as kind of like a club. But I want to say that we are an, a, you know, an, an outpost of heaven where people can experience a closing of the gaps. We say, on earth as it is in heaven, right? And I don't want to talk about just the earth. I want to talk about right here, right now, in our midst. And we often encounter gaps, and it's frustrating and vexing and can drain the life out of us. Because there are gaps that uh, remain open because of our rigidity. You know, we get stuck in ruts. You look at Jesus' ministry, he did things in new ways. You know, he tweaked the noses of the religious authorities of his day. He reinterpreted the law. He said a new thing is happening. Yet it's just our human nature to say that will never work, or we've always done it that way before, or that will make things work. We human beings can fight closing the gaps with our rigidity. We also can fight those gaps with our fear. We know what we don't like, but what we don't know is sometimes scarier than what we do know. And that just nurtures our doubts. But I want to say that the biggest fight to to the gaps is um, just ourselves and our brokenness. That... uh, We have a hard time getting past those things. And that can get in the way of the work of God. Enter our gospel reading from Jesus. Jesus is talking to the Pharisees. And the Pharisees thought about God in terms of, well, there's a code and we have to understand the code. Look here, look there, chase after it. And Jesus says, the kingdom of God is among you. Hmm. That's kind of tough. You know? Because he doesn't say exactly where. It's just in their midst. And if we say that the Bible's living word, know what Jesus says to other people, he's also saying to us, Jesus is saying the kingdom of God is amongst us. And I don't know about you, but I would, for myself, I would appreciate a little more specificity in that location. I mean, where? Is it there where the holy stuff happens? Is it right here where Wendy's sitting because Wendy's a nice person? Is it in the baptismal font over there? Jesus doesn't say it like that. He says it's in our midst. And if the biggest challenge to the gap is our brokenness and our refusal to change and our rigidity and our fear, maybe there's something very profound about what Jesus is telling us today. That in order to get, conquer that gap, from order, in order to get from here to there, whatever the here to there is, either in your life or for us, for a community, it begins 
with the understanding that God is with us. Twelve step programs for overcoming addiction. Step number one, we admit we are powerless over the substance and that our lives have become unmanageable. People who fight addiction begin with that understanding that they're powerless. The Apostle Paul, when he struggled in ministry and struggled with his own brokenness, heard God say this, and he says this in 2 Corinthians 9, my power is made perfect in your weakness. My power is made perfect in your weakness. You got brokenness, you got gaps, invite God into those very places, and God will do something. Such an approach prevents us from saying, if only. If only, and then you fill in the thing that you perceive as the obstacle to conquering that gap. If only I had more support. If only I had more money. If only I had more time. Churches can do that too. If only we had more people. If only we had more children. If only we had more money. If only we had better people, whatever that means, better. If only we had a better pastor, whatever that means, <laughs> better pastor. We see a gap and we want to place blame and we get immobilized. And Jesus says to us, no, there is enough right here, right now for God's kingdom to be built upon. The kingdom of God is among us. Jesus says, where my servant is, there will I be also. God is here. Jesus is here. Jesus says in John, I tell, very truly I tell you, the one who believes in me will do the works I do. In fact, they will do greater works than these. Jesus says his followers will do greater things than he did in his ministry. And Jesus says in Matthew 28, the end of the gospel, Lo, I will always be with you until the end of the age. So enough gap thinking. In the words of a preacher here in Atlanta, stop telling God how big your problems are and start telling your problems how big God is. Isn't that nice? Not, not a Pastor Jason original, but I wanted to pass it on to you. Don't tell God how big your problems are. Tell your problems how big God is. And with that conviction that God is in our midst doing the kingdom stuff through us, we can change the world. To God be the glory now and forever. Amen.